All right, Shalom. This is your brother Nahoya from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. All right, in tonight's lesson, all right, through the spirit of Pavia, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, it's based on the understanding that not only did the Lord intend to have nations be separated from another, but that in the kingdom of heaven, nations will be separated one from another. All right, and I want to touch on some precepts and I'll bring this out. All right, so this is Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 7. And it reads, remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee thy elders and they will tell thee when the most high divided to the nations their inheritance when he separated the sons of adam he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of israel for the lord's portion is his people jacob is the lot of his inheritance all right and there at that precept right there it's very clear very plain all right that the lord intends to have nations separated all right Matter of fact, let me see if I can find this one in the Apocrypha. Yep. All right, so this is Ecclesiastes chapter 33 and verse 11. All right, and it reads, And much knowledge the Lord hath divided them. I'll start up. Let me start up. This is Ecclesiastes 33 and 10. And it reads, And all men are from the ground, and Adam was created of, the, of earth. And much knowledge the Lord hath divided them, and made their ways diverse. Some of them hath he blessed and exalted, and some of them hath he some of them he sanctified and set near himself. But some of them hath he cursed and brought low, and turned out of their places. As the clay is in the potter's hand, to fashion it as his pleasure, so man is in the hand of him that made him, to render to them as liketh him best. All right, so the Lord has made all people's ways diverse, all right, and he's divided them, most importantly. All right, this uh, experiment, which is uh, America, all right, the so-called melting pot, all right, is adverse to the will of the Heavenly Father, man. And when I say it's adverse to the Heavenly Father, I say that because the Lord's will was to divide nations. All right, when you go into Deuteronomy 32nd chapter, all right, it clearly says that the Lord divided the nations, their inheritance based on the number of the children of Israel. All right. But the point is that the Lord divided nations and gave them their own land, their own heritage. And it's for it's for a reason, it's for a purpose. All right. As a matter of fact, let's go to this. All right. This is Ecclesiastes 13 and 17. All right. And it reads. I'm at the start up. So uh, Ecclesiastes 13 and 16. Now I'll start at uh, 15. All right, and it reads, Every beast loveth his like, and every man loveth his neighbor. And the reason that you have a lot of issues going on, especially in uh, Babylon the Great, which is America, is because every man loveth his neighbor. All right, and that's why the Lord divided nations according to the, the, the nation that you belong to. All right, that's, that is your inheritance. Now, does that mean that other nations can't visit other nations and do business and do trade? No, that's not the case. But predominantly, all right, the nations are meant to abide in their own inheritance, which is their own land. All right, that's the will of the Heavenly Father. All right, even when you go into seeds, the Lord doesn't like gardens being planted, all right, with um, mixed seeds. Meaning you have to have a garden, you have to separate your, your, your squash, all right, from the figs and, and so on and so forth. All right, everything is done decently and in order. All right, and the only thing in nature that is in disorder right now is humanity and its lack of order. All right, and that's why uh, Hamashiach, the one that they ignorantly call Jesus, uh, is going to come and he's going to divide the nations. All right, he's going to separate nations one from another because that's the original intent of the Heavenly Father. All right, now before that happens, all right, the Lord is going to render judgments concerning nations. All right. So uh, Ecclesiastes 13, and I'll finish this off at 16, and it reads, 
all flesh consorteth according to kind, and a man will cleave to his like. All right, all flesh will consort according to kind. And that's why birds, uh, particular birds, fly with particular birds. All right, that's why lions dwell with lions and hyenas dwell with hyenas. All right, because the Lord has everything decently and in order. All right, in his will and his intention. All right, especially in these last days after all is said and done and the kingdom of heaven is established, nations will have their own land, their own inheritance. There will be no fighting over borders. All right, but the Lord's intent is that nations will be able to dwell amongst each other. You know, that's the intent of the Heavenly Father. All right, and, um, you know, a lot of the issues that are going on around the world, you know, have a lot to do with who's in rulership, which is Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. But it also has a lot to do with the um, forsaking of the covenant, all right? Because when you understand the covenant, we understand the will and the intent of the Heavenly Father. Then you understand that it's not the Lord's intent to have nations uh, live on top of each other. Different uh, nations of people literally being forced to live on top of each other. All right. That's not the intent of the Heavenly Father. All right. But like the scriptures say, some have uh, violently taken fields and removed the landmarks. So certain lands that actually belong to a nation of people. That land has been taken. It has been renamed. All right. And all of these borders will have to be reestablished in the kingdom of heaven. All right. This is um, Isaiah 24 and 5. And it reads, the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. All right, because the, a part of this covenant, a part of this law, the law, statutes, and commandments which were given unto Israel is also, all right, the will and intent of the Heavenly Father. And that's why I started off with Deuteronomy 32nd chapter. All right, because the Lord said he divided the nations, their inheritance. Now, he did it based on the number of the children of Israel. But the point is that the Lord divided the nations, their land, their place that they have to go and call home. If you want us to join in another land, that's fine. All right, but the will and intent of the Heavenly Father is to have nations or families have their own set land to dwell, to call home. That's why the Lord uh, told us that we were scattered. That's a part of our curse. We have no home. We have no sure dwelling place. We're sojourners on the earth. We have no, you know, our, our land is the land of Israel. But after the conquest of Esau, Edom, all right, the world has been divided up and given to Edomites, all right, wherever they may be at, whether it's Brazil, Africa, um, Japan, wherever it is, you have some wealthy Edomites that are close to the, uh, the top of that system in that nation that dictate the policy of that nation. As a matter of fact, it reminds me of this. So let me go to Psalms chapter 17 and verse 14. All right, and it reads, I start, I start at 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. From men which are thy hand, O Lord. From men of the world, which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure. They are full of children, and leave the rest of their substance to their babes, all right? So Esau, Edom has conquered the world, all right? He's left that substance to his lineage, all right? And that's why the banking families really dictate policy on the planet Earth, because through the banking institution, all right, Esau, Edom is able to control all lands and all territories, no matter who resides there. And in his system, all right, there has been a lot of uh, mixing, all right? And when I say mixing, I mean just having nations amongst nations on top of each other. And uh, Babylon the Great, which is America, is a perfect example of that. You know, Christianity has this idea of the Lord um, having this uh, multinational um, kingdom of heaven, and that's not the case, all right? 
kingdom of heaven is going to be established with Hamashiach, which is the one they ignorantly call Jesus, whose name is Yahawashai. All right, and the Israelites, the kingdom of heaven will be established with that nation being at the head of all nations. And all nations under that will be given an inheritance. They will be given a land that, that belongs to them, the original land that was given to them by the Heavenly Father when he divided the nations in Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. Except for Esau Edom, which is the so-called white man. Among all the families of the earth, he is the only one that is designated to be removed off the earth as a nation of people. All right, as a matter of fact, let me get that for edification's sake. All right, this is Obadiah 1, or Obadiah, because it's only one chapter. And I'll start at verse 18. And it reads, And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them, and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. All right, so there will no longer be a nation of Edomites. All right? But outside of that, the other nations will have an inheritance with the earth, all right? They will have a land to call their own, all right? Uh, China is a perfect example of that, all right? You have Chinese that go all across the country. You know, they may sojourn in uh, so-called Africa. You know, they may even come to the Americas. But if all else fails, they have China that they can go back to. That is supposed to be a, a right that every nation on the earth has on the planet, all right? You Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, most importantly, are the ones who are um, severely um, downtrodden when it concerns where you can and can't go, all right? You have no said homeland. Even the Brazils and the South Americas and, you know, the Mexicos, they are owned and ran by Edomites. All right, like we said before, through the spirit, Esau, through banking and through different corporations, all right, has allowed power, all right, to, to control nations, even if the nation, even if the people in that uh, nation are predominantly another nationality. Because it's not just to have your own homeland, you actually have to be able to govern yourself. And in the kingdom of heaven, all right, Israel, which are, which consists of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you will be the Israelites. You will be the ones who are in control of policy. But these other nations will have their own heads. They're, they will have their own governments. But it is the will and intent of the Heavenly Father right, to have nations separated, all right? So this is uh, Matthew 25, all right? And I'll start at verse 32, all right? I'll start at 31. Matthew 25 and 31, and it reads, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, all right? So it says that all the nations will be gathered together and the Lord is going to separate them one from another. Because that's the, and there's nothing wrong with that through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemel We know and understand that because it's the will of the Heavenly Father. And the Lord is all righteous. There is no iniquity in the Heavenly Father. And his counsel stands above all counsel. So if, if the Lord's counsel and his will is to have nations separated, then that is obviously the best case scenario for the planet and for all the families on the earth. You know, a perfect example is um, the prison system. They're not forced to segregate, but they do that. Why? Because when you go into Ecclesiastes, the 13th chapter it says, every neighbor, every man loveth his neighbor. And your neighbor is a member of your nation. It's not somebody you live beside. It's a member of your nation. That is a, your neighbor. All right, as a matter of fact, to prove all things, I'm going to go to Leviticus chapter 13 and verse 18. All right, and it reads, oh, excuse me, I meant uh, 17. 
All right, Leviticus 17 and no, I'm tripping. Salakia. This is Leviticus 19. All right, and verse 17. And it reads, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So this is brother and neighbor being used interchangeably. All right. Verse 18 reads, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am Yahweh Bashim al Shai. All right. So the children of thy people and neighbor are synonymous. And like it says in Ecclesiastes, the 13th chapter, every man loveth his neighbor. All right. Just like a family. Think about families in, in, uh, in America. All right. Your uncle, your auntie, you know, you have a different kind of affection for them than you have for anybody you just run into in the world. That's just that's supposed to be the same mindset that you have for your nation. But because the definition of uh, your nationality and who your neighbor is has been changed by this modern society. You know, you Negro, Latinos, Native Americans especially have lost track of that understanding. But in the kingdom of heaven, every man of a nation is going to have a land that belongs to him, all right, as a nation of people. If you want us to join in another land, that's fine. But it's going to be the will of the Heavenly Father that the majority of the families of the earth are going to be living amongst each other. They're going to be living amongst the family that they were born into or the nation that they were born of. And that's how everything is done decently and in order through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. And this is, that's how, that's why, you know, people get upset and it's, it's controversial in this world for us to say that the Lord, you know, the one they call God is racist. All right. Which only means for your race, for your nation. All right. But it is true. All right. By definition, it's true. And it is the will of the Heavenly Father to have nations separated. Not the same way the so-called white man did it in segregation. Where you're separated but you get secondhand everything. And you get the, the, uh, the worst of all things. No. The Lord is going to separate nations and those nations are going to be able to govern. They're going to have their own people as governors and officials over them. They're going to have their own police, if you will, you know. All of these things are going to be dictated by that nation, but they're going to have to answer to the Israelites, all right, which are the people of the Lord. And that is the promise that was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right? As a matter of fact, let me get this, because that is the promise that the Lord gave to the nation of Israel. All right. This is... Genesis 27, all right, and I'll start at verse 28, all right, and it reads, Therefore the Most High give thee of the dew of heaven, and the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that cursed thee. And blessed be every, blessed be he that blesseth thee. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. All right, and we know that Jacob's name was changed to Israel. All right, but I wanted to bring this out to show you that Israel is going to have nations serve them, meaning that the Israelites are going to be at the top of the the, the hierarchy. That nations will be divided and placed in their own land and they'll have their own inheritance. But they will have to answer to the nation of Israel. Alright, so I just wanted to go through this through the spirit and power of the Abba Shemel Shai. Just to make it very calm and plain. You know that through the scriptures, alright, through the precepts, we get understanding of the, the intent and the will of the Heavenly Father. And it is the will and intent of the Heavenly Father that nations are separated from one another. And that in the kingdom of heaven, nations will be separated one from another. 
Does that mean that they have to stay in those lands that they are designated? No, not at all. They'll be able to sojourn and, and travel and trade. But it is the will of the Lord as the majority, all right? The majority of the families of the earth are going to dwell amongst each other. All right, so Lord willing, this was edifying. With that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. The bonds to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.